In August 2008, on the Supernatural Phenomena Discussion Board of Two Channel, there appeared a post titled, Share Your Scariest Stories? Within this thread, an anonymous user shared a story about encountering Hashakusama during summer vacation. This story quickly sparked discussions online. According to the user's account, Hashakusama is described as a female specter clad in a white dress, standing at a height of 8 feet. In today's video, we'll delve into the story of the 8 feet yokai from the widely circulated urban legend. Hashakusama is described as a yokai standing at a height of 8 feet, or approximately 240 centimeters. She wears a long, pure white dress, and her dark flowing hair cascades down her back. She is known to emit a strange, male-like laughter described as Popopo. This urban legend shares similarities with the well-known Western urban legend, Slender Man. If you feel that they are not similar in any way, feel free to leave a comment below the video with your thoughts. Hashakusama is an aggressive yokai who can mimic the voices of her victim's relatives, causing them to lower their guard. Those bewitched by Hashakusama typically perish within a few days. She primarily targets children and teenagers because they are more susceptible to her deception unlike adults who are less vulnerable. Hashakusama first appeared on the well-known Japanese Forum 2 channel, hosted anonymously by a user in 2008. This story quickly gained significant attention online due to its eerie and seemingly genuine nature. We'll refer to the anonymous user as Yumiko. Yumiko begins by explaining that her grandparent house is located about a two-hour drive from her home. Because of its beautiful surroundings, Yumiko loved visiting there to see her grandparents. However, after Yumiko entered junior high third year, her father stopped taking them there. The reason given by Yumiko's father was not not wanting to go, but rather not being able to go. After entering high school, Yumiko obtained a driver's license for the car. At the beginning of that year's winter vacation, Yumiko secretly drove to her grandfather's house without informing her father. When her grandparents saw her, they were pleasantly surprised but also displayed a sense of worry. Perplexed, Yumiko asked her grandparents why they were concerned. Her grandfather simply mentioned that the public safety in the area had recently declined, advising Yumiko not to venture too far or go out at night. The next morning, the weather was warm and pleasant, and Yumiko was relaxing in the backyard under the warm sun. Suddenly, she heard a strange popopo sound in her ear. It didn't sound mechanical, rather, it seemed like a sound made by a person. Then, she noticed a woman with long hair wearing a white dress crouching beside the courtyard. Driven by curiosity, Yumiko approached and asked what the woman was doing in her family's yard. The woman didn't respond. Instead, she slowly stood up. Yumiko was startled because the woman standing up was a towering eight feet tall, and her long hair covered her face, giving her an indescribably eerie appearance. With the woman emitting popopo laughter, a frightened Yumiko immediately ran back to her grandfather's house. At noon, Yumiko had lunch with her grandparents and mentioned the strange woman she had seen earlier that morning. Initially, her grandparents didn't pay much attention, but when Yumiko described the woman as nearly eight feet tall, wearing a hat and making a strange popopo sound, her grandfather and grandmother suddenly froze their expressions turning serious. Her grandfather, with a stern look, started asking questions like, when did you see this? And where did you see her? Then he quickly ran outside to make a phone call, while her grandmother appeared to be trembling. Concerned by her grandparents' reaction, 
Yumiko asked her grandmother what was going on. Her grandmother's response chilled her to the core. Her grandmother said, You must have been bewitched by Hasaku-sama. Don't worry, your grandfather will take care of it. No need to be afraid. Hasaku-sama. This was the first time Yumiko heard that name. A name that would stay with her for the rest of her life. Shortly after, Yumiko's grandfather returned with an elderly woman referred to as Master K. After observing Yumiko for a while, Master K handed her a talisman and then accompanied Yumiko's grandfather upstairs to a room that was prepared. All the windows in the room were covered with newspapers and adorned with protective charms. For bowls of salt were placed in each corner of the room. And there was also a wooden box containing a Buddhist statue. Master K led Yumiko into the room and instructed her not to leave until the following morning. During this time, no one would speak to her, and she was advised not to respond to anyone until the morning sunlight appeared. Finally, she was instructed to keep the talisman with her at all times, and to pray before the Buddhist statue if she felt scared. Yumiko was extremely frightened as if facing a great threat, but she had no choice but to obey Master K's instructions. Before being confined to the room, her grandmother had given her some rice balls and snacks, but she had no appetite and instead wrapped herself in a blanket, trembling. Eventually, she drifted off into a fitful sleep. At some point later, Yumiko suddenly woke up, and her watch showed it was just past one o'clock in the middle of the night. Then, she heard knocking sounds knock, knock, outside the door. Didn't Master K instruct that no one would come before daylight? Could it be Hasaku-sama outside the door? Growing increasingly frightened, Yumiko dared not respond or open the door. Instead, she quickly knelt before the Buddhist statue to pray. Just then, her grandfather's voice came from outside the door. Yumiko, are you alright? If you're scared, you don't have to hold back. Come over to me. Relieved, Yumiko hurriedly opened the door, which was adorned with protective charms. But there was no one outside, certainly not her grandfather. It was then that she realized something was wrong. As she saw the salt placed in the four corners of the room slowly turning black. With a popopo, a tall woman in a white dress appeared before Yumiko, causing her to be too frightened to remember Master K's instructions. She quickly ran out of the room and downstairs to find her grandfather. Everyone downstairs was astonished to see Yumiko in such a state. Master K shook her head and said to Yumiko's grandfather, There's no other choice now. The last chance is to leave here as soon as possible by car. Hoping to escape from Hasaka-sama before daylight, Yumiko's grandfather grabbed the car keys, and they all got into the car to leave. Inside the car, Master K instructed Yumiko to close her eyes and cover her ears, then began chanting scriptures. An extremely anxious Yumiko kept her eyes shut but heard many knocks on the car windows, mixed with the popopo sound. After what felt like a long time, Yumiko sensed that her grandfather's car had stopped moving. Was it safe now? Lost in her thoughts, Yumiko forgot Master K's instructions and opened her eyes, only to see. According to rumors, most of Hasaka-sama's victims are teenagers and children. This is because, in extreme distress, they often hear the voices of loved ones, making them more susceptible to letting their guard down. As for Yumiko's outcome, she was able to post about her experience 10 years after the incident, so I assume she successfully escaped. However, the specific details of her escape remain unknown. In 2021, interest in Hasaka-sama was reignited when Capcom released Resident Evil 8, introducing a villainous character named Lady Dimitrescu who bears a resemblance to Hasaka-sama. Perhaps people have a fondness for tall women, 
given the striking similarities between these two characters. This is also why Hasha Kasama has gained fame in modern urban legends. If you enjoy my channel, please help by hitting the subscribe button and turning on the notification bell so you won't miss my upcoming videos. Thank you for watching until the end, and I'll see you next time.